Well, hey everyone, I hope you had a good weekend. Sorry about the confusion about Friday's video, about hoping you had a good weekend. I uh, had to move some things around and did not want to record and re-edit an entire video. So now I hope you had a good weekend and uh, that everything went well for you. Uh, today we are going to be wrapping up the judicial branch and then tomorrow is a standalone lesson. Uh, the Florida legislature has declared tomorrow uh, victims of communism day and so there'll be an entirely different lesson, entirely different focus tomorrow and then when I return we on Wednesday we'll be looking at getting ready for our article 3 the judicial branch test. So today we're gonna to wrap up uh, the judicial branch. And so in order to begin doing that, we wanna review, and on your screen it will say uh, a few things there for you. Have a conversation together with your groups. What is judicial review? What's the difference between a majority opinion, concurring opinion, and dissenting opinion? What types of cases are exclusive to the federal court? What types of cases are exclusive to state courts? Have those conversations. Uh, your substitute will lead you in those conversations and then we'll come back. Welcome back. And so now we're getting into the topic of today, the inferior courts and the special courts. So I'd like you to consider what special occasions might require a special court or an inferior court to hear a case before it works the way up to the appellate courts and the uh, Supreme Court. So what groups might require special attention, what cases might require special attention that might be unusual for a typical court to hear. So talk about that again with your shoulder partner and then we'll be back. All right, so you see uh, how federal cases are appealed on the slide in front of you. And you see that they, again, they almost always begin in district court. Federal court cases almost always begin in district court. But even within federal courts, there are two types of cases. There are criminal cases and civil cases. Civil cases that are in federal court usually take place when um, individuals are engaged in a non-criminal activity, and then it would require a federal, federal court to hear the case if, for example, somebody who lives in Florida were to file a lawsuit against somebody who lived in Folkston, let's say. You can't have a case where two citizens and different two residents in different states are, are engaged in a civil matter um, and have it be run by one of the state courts. It requires it to be heard in a federal court. But a criminal case could be heard in either a state court or a federal court. So in that sense, a criminal case is a concurrent. It could be heard in either case. The word docket is just a legal term for courts. A uh, docket is just a list of all the cases that are going to be heard that day. And then the record um, is the transcript and all other evidence that is recorded in a particular trial. And then if those things get, if that case gets appealed, the writ of cert certiorari uh, is, uh, is what it is that the higher court would issue in order to get the transcripts and the evidence for um, those special court, uh, special court cases. Now, I hope that you've already had time to do vocabulary. If you haven't, now might be a good time because the remainder of our time together today is going to be a conversation about the Sixth and Seventh Amendment as it relates to uh, current um, culture. Uh, after you do that vocabulary, if, if you need a few minutes to do vocabulary, um, go ahead and do so. But please make sure you have at least 15 to 20 minutes at the end of class today to deal with uh, the last thing that we're going to be talking about. And so your substitute's going to be showing you a, a case um, that will help you to, uh, to set the stage for the Sixth and Seventh Amendment, your right to an attorney and your right to a speedy trial. So work on your vocab and then we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. And if you've not already done so, escape this video, transition to the other video that is the ABC News uh, uh, video, uh, news video on Guantanamo Bay and um, all the stuff that's happening in uh, Guantanamo Bay with um, a 9-11 prisoners. And then let's come back and we're gonna talk. 
Okay, so critical questions for us. There are in, not only in Guantanamo Bay, but in prisons in America, there are young men and women who are there who are trying to advocate or plead that they are innocent. They are not guilty of the crime that they've been accused of. And yet, and yet, because they have a public defender, they do not have the money to hire a private defender, they're going to be sitting in prison because of how long it takes the cases to go through uh, to trial. That is a problem for criminal justice, and it is not justice. So what I would encourage you guys to talk about as we r wrestle with the end of this uh, topic on the judiciary is how, how might we solve this as the voting public? What are some potential solutions? Talk about these with your group, talk about these as a class with your substitute leading that conversation, and I really look forward to hearing what it is that you guys might come up with to help lead the way as a voting citizen to help resolve some of the challenges that exist in our court system. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I look forward to telling you in person that you matter. I look forward to sharing stories about my grandkids and all the fun we had together. But I want to remind you, you matter. And I hope you have a great discussion today. And we'll see you tomorrow.